All right, so we're here day two. We got to get some painting of some stucco done. And I was using an interved roller, but we're going to be using an airless spare. I got a lot of high stuff to do, and I was going to rent a lift. It posed um, all the lifts are taken, and there was a big challenge getting a lift. I was going to use a tow behind lift, and um, there's multiple places you can rent them from rental yards to um, Home Depot even rents the things. And it was a big challenge trying to get one, and uh, I just decided, you know what? I'm just gonna climb ladders and just do it with ladders and see if I can do it with ladders and not do a lift and how much longer it will take me without a lift and we'll evaluate that when we get done. So you're gonna see me climbing up and down ladders all day long spraying, doing it the hard way, solo. So let's get to work. Day three, working on this exterior uh, commercial building and I'm gonna just go over you know, some of the things, um, not every job site is the same. Uh, what you think you're going to do, you may not do because um, just things are different. So you have to be willing to change and adapt as a painter. And, you know, I had ideas of how I was going to go about painting this building. And they completely changed after I started using the tools that I was going to use to paint this building. And I'm going to talk about that today. I was you know, originally gonna be just um, using an interfed roller and uh, rolling and back rolling this whole thing with a Titan interfed roller and uh, do the heavy nature of this um, stucco, um, how slow it was going back rolling, um, the fact that it's been uh, sprayed and back rolled already multiple times, um, made it so it's not as necessary to back roll uh, this what it is a big color change so it wasn't going to be a big color change originally I was just going to paint it uh, white again and the customer now wanted it a darker color so that uh, changed the dynamics of how I have gone about you know tackling this job now and I'm going to talk a little bit about you know some of that is uh, we're cruising along here today painting and spraying so you know, originally I was gonna uh, do the lot of back rolling on this project and you know, I started finding that it wasn't really necessary, but the due to the heavy structure to this stucco, there's like kind of these, these infinite numbers of angles and I could spray it you know, faster. You gotta uh, spray it one direction, spray it another direction, and then get on a ladder and look at it at multiple directions to make sure all the ins and outs of the stucco are um are coated and this this job basically this stuck of what what we're really doing because it's already been painted um, back rolled multiple times it's in pretty good condition and we're just basically doing a color change on this and i'm using a flat paint to achieve this color change we're using duration and so now like th this side i can walk around and look and see um, light spots and stuff like that where I can just hit and touch up these light spots and a little bit different than uh, the back rolling process and stuff but uh, this is a lot faster and more effective than what I was doing I'd be begin with and once again it's just a matter of just adapting and changing you know to the situation that you're in and this is working out you know really effective if this thing was just a stucco that had never been painted before the back brushing process is really or back rolling is really essential to get good penetration an adhesion of your top coat but um or your paint but you know um this has been painted multiple times back brush back rolled and another thing i didn't have my 30 inch gun extension when i was out here yesterday and it was at another job site and now you can see i got a way farther reach that i can spray with and yesterday i was using a spray pole a hide spray pole which worked out really well uh, too. Um, so a spray pole, gun extension, they're both gonna be effective tools for spray and stucco. But as I'm climbing up here, now that it's dry, I can see light spots. When the stucco is wet, you 
can't see these light spots, which are white because the previous color was white. Now I can see them. And one of the benefits to doing you know, a flat on stucco is you, you won't see any type of flashing or anything or a sheen difference because you know, you're flat on flat and flat paint is very forgiving on stucco. But this project is cruising right along, kind of like right on schedule. But once again, it's that, just that willingness to, you know, adapt, not get frustrated. You know, I came out here, was originally gonna just uh, use that interfed roller back roll, this whole thing and just cruise right along with that and using multiple poles, but it was, um, it would have took me probably three times longer, you know, with the interfed roller to actually do this project. So this is going to be, you know, significantly faster spraying it. But you want to ultimately give your customer, you know, the the best product. And so if you know back rolling or back brushing is necessary, you definitely want to do that. But like I say once again, I was blessed with um, painters that actually painted this before, rolling it, filling in on stucco the back rolling process. What it does is it fills in all the little pinholes and stuff, you know, with the with the paint. Fills those in, gives it a smoother look, but um, still gives you that stucco look. Some people might want to know, you know, why I'm, because even the, the customer thought I was going to be using a satin, but I always use flat paints on stucco because I want my stucco to continue to look like stucco. So I don't want it to have a shiny look because stucco, when it's originally put on, it's not shiny, it's flat. And so I want it to continue to have, you know, that flat stucco effect. And that's what you know we're doing by continuing to paint it flat again. It's interesting, until it dries, you really can't see the spots that you miss, but stucco is just one of those things you gotta be patient. Don't think you're gonna spray it just one time and be done because there's all these different angles. After I hit it this time, I'm gonna have to look at it again and spray it again at a different angle, different look. That's why I actually climb on the ladder and look down at the stucco also. Because looking up, I'm gonna spray up. I'm spraying underneath some of the voids, but I'm not spraying down on top of the voids because now when I get to this direction, I can see you know, white spots on the stucco that need to be sprayed. You can see having an extension like this, I'm not gonna have to move my ladder nearly as much as, you know, if I didn't have the extension. Yesterday, uh, I was doing the top near the red band. I didn't have an extension on. One of the rare, rare times I don't use a gun extension because I needed more gun control when I was spraying around the they have these, um, you can see the lights, the, um, the fluorescent lights or neon lights, whatever you call them. I needed to make sure I had really good control around those lights. So I wasn't using a gun extension then, which means I had to climb up the ladder a lot more. And at the end of the day, I went to the gym had a squat and my legs were pretty tired from all the climbing up and down ladders. It's really about just, you know, being a more effective, more efficient painter. Uh, using 
you know, these type of tools, you know, having these tools will make your job faster, more efficient. You can get on to the next job sooner, make more money and ultimately get more customers, which means you'll be able to email more customers out the work that you did, remind them, you know, what you did, who you are, you know, when times get slow. But I'm a huge fan of gun extensions and I guess what we call painting lazy because I'm not climbing up and down ladders nearly as much when I got a gun extension. So that's some people might wonder what that shirt is all about that I had made paint lazy. That's what it's all about. But up here, I'm looking down, you know, at these voids that I, you would never be able to see from down, down below, but you never know when the customer's gonna climb up a ladder, hang Christmas lights or whatever, you know, and just see these light spots. And this will help seal everything good and tight tip to spray this stucco. I've gone through like 22 gallons now. This tip is starting to get pretty blown out, but being on stucco, it doesn't matter. But you just end up wasting more paint. You'll start to get more overspray. You know, if you try to use your tips too long. Today I just see I got um, my extend climb ladder. I know a lot of guys don't like these ladders. I absolutely love them because I can just throw it in my back of the truck. I don't have to have a big van to carry an extension ladder. And I actually feel very comfortable and safe on them. I know a lot of people don't. Um, or at least I hear people on my social media that aren't comfortable using them just got to be careful not getting overspray on the um i guess the side rails otherwise they um won't function properly so i if i'm going to be doing a ton of spraying i wouldn't be using the ladder for this but i'm just doing touch-ups right now so i'm not concerned about it i've almost got this side done touch up wise and then i'm gonna head up top up here and start spraying some stuff on top of this building see spraying left hand left handed is very convenient if you don't practice spraying left handed you should because definitely will help you out in certain situations. So it's always good to wear a respirator. I'm trying to, you know, teach right now, give a lot of pointers. And so I can't do that if I'm wearing a respirator, but um, always, always wear respirators. It's never good to be breathing you know, paint all day long. I started wearing those um, respirators from RZ because they're, I don't know, they're just a lot more comfortable to me. And I don't have, you know, a sticky silicone mask on my face all day long. All right, I think I got this side fairly well touched up. I'm gonna stand back and look a little bit more if you just look um it's weird i kind of what i say look out of my peripheral vision and if you think you see a light spot hit it um because what happens is you'll think you'll see it then you'll get closer and look at it and you can't see it again but your peripheral vision us usually doesn't lie to you and just spray that spot you thought you saw and you'll be good all right 
This is looking pretty good. I um, was working around these bushes yesterday. It was kind of a challenge. Um, right here. See if I got it all coated well through here. Having the extension poles and stuff made it very convenient to paint back here. This stripe up here, I'm just gonna hand do this stripe with a different red. There's a slight breeze out here today and I'm up here high and there's you know cars out in the parking lot and stuff and you know I get these questions all the time about overspray and you know this is one of those situations know know your conditions um and you know turn your pressure down i got the pressure really low i'm using an hea tip so i got my pressure turned down you know uh pretty low and so that'll minimize over spray don't use blown out tips another thing is a blown out tip will cause you know over spray um and don't spray up into the wind um if you're not comfortable you know then spray and then you better roll but also these are latex paints i'm using that dry extremely fast and so up in the air you know in these uh paints the droplets go up into the sky on a pretty hot day like today they're gonna flash dry you know really fast so um, they're not going to land on any cars as wet paint now if this was an oil-based paint that's um, a whole different ball game um, you definitely would want to be extremely careful you know shooting um, oil-based paint you know up in the air you know this high on a roof where they can carry out to those you know nice trucks in the parking lot and and stuff but um i'm pretty confident you know what i'm doing up here controlling overspray it's interesting i've never had an overspray claim you know in my entire career painting so i've been very careful uh you know spraying but also just so my audience knows i live in an extremely dry, uh, warm climate where paint flash dries extremely fast and doesn't carry in the end is uh, wet droplets of paint. So um, a lot of people don't understand that. And um, so explaining that might help people understand a little bit more, you know, the old overspray issue so i've almost got you know this roof part all done up here i think i just about you know, got this done it's weird there's shadows and stuff that make it look like light spots but they're just weird shadows i thought i was going to be using my cardboard shield holder up here and stuff but uh, unless you're in a helicopter you can't you'll know, see this bottom edge so didn't need to make it totally perfect like i said you know to go back to you know touching on you know um being willing to adapt and change you know every single that's one of the cool things about painting i guess in general is is that you know every job even though it's just another house every job poses different challenges different situations that are just slightly different you know and so you have to um you know, look at the job and figure out how you're going to tackle it the most, you know, efficient way uh, that you can. And um, and sometimes you'll have tools to do it. Sometimes you won't. Um, you, and I'll run into situations where I don't have a tool and I'll find a tool that will um, actually work for a certain situation. Then I add it to my toolbox and been constantly over 20 years adding, you know, more tools to the toolbox to the point that you know i've multiple vans that had to carry all the tools that you know i had 
you know, with me and, um, you know, some of them were just game changing tools. Some were tools that, you know, you'll literally only use once or twice a year, but they will make uh, the job a lot more convenient for you, a lot easier for you. And just, um, sometimes just less stressful on you. So I'm a big advocate of buying any tool and every tool, you know, necessarily to make the job, uh, more efficient and more pleasant so I you know, like just you know as I walk I walk this building you know continually from end to end I'm always just staring at the stucco and looking for uh, light spots and if I see one if I don't have the gun in my hand I just make you know, a mental note of where I saw that and and that way I can hit it next time I walk by but I got the gun I'm transferring out here to the front and I'll be you know watching now uh for any any spots that are missed and one of the two of the benefits to you know using sprayers with long hoses I got a hundred feet of hose on this thing right now the more hose you have less time you have to move at least the amount of times you have to move the sprayer so it's about trying to be once again efficient what you're doing moving the sprayer this is a it's again i think i um, may have set up but today this is day three painting this building i guess i would say i'm pretty much on schedule from what I plan to be doing. I think I'm gonna end up, everything is really low. Stuff, nothing on a ladder. So I'm gonna take my gun extension off again and run you know, without my gun extension on this stuff here. That way I have you know, more gun control. Um, so to work around these neon lights here. So I've got a shield at the bottom here. What's interesting is these neon lights, um, I touched one and I got shocked by it. So if you didn't know, these lights will shock you. I'm gonna be painting this red. It's amazing these lights just attract bugs. So this is what you call, even after I power wash it, it's all buggy as spider webs and bugs and stuff. Kind of annoying. It'd be a good uh, time for bug juice. So bug juice is a paint additive that kills flying and crawling insects. Um, wouldn't have this problem with all these spider webs on here. Gotta be careful with these lights. I'm sure they're probably pretty fragile. So I wanna break one. Just eat up all my profits, you know? Once again, I don't know if they, I don't think you can see this, but it was previously painted. So maybe you can see it from down below. So I just shot that. We'll come back up here when this is all dry. Check for light spots. Usually when you're this close, you know, you can see everything right in front of you and you don't have hardly anything that you miss. One thing we don't talk a lot about, need to make a video on it, is an injection hazard, you know, injecting yourself with paint, whatever happens to you, um, it could actually kill you. So it's kind of a life or death situation. You, you inject yourself with paint, 
um, get to the hospital right away. I carry an injection card in my wallet. That way, if I ever get injected with paint, the doctors will know how to tr treat it. Some doctors may not know. Once again, this is another great reason to have a uh, long hose, 150 feet of hose or more, you know, up to your sprayer. All right, there you have it. We're all done with day uh, number two, spraying the stucco with our airless sprayer. And uh, we didn't use a lift. I couldn't get a lift. Uh, the, you know, that's what you call planning. I didn't plan ahead. I should have reserved a lift uh, two, three weeks ago, uh, months ago, because they're not, not available. But I was able to do it. So climbing down, up and down ladders all day long, solo by myself, be nice to have somebody move the ladder. But I didn't have anybody move the ladder for me because this is a solo video. So we're going to be coming back tomorrow and we're going to be doing all the red striping. Um, and we're going to be doing that from ladders. So just up and down ladders all day long. I'm going to show you how I go about doing that red stripe, the product I'm going to be using because it is a really vibrant red and that's not going to be easy to do. So stay tuned for day number three, painting the stucco building solo. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, that little bell next to the subscribe button because that just allows you to get emailed every time I come out with a new video. It's simple, free, easy to do. It doesn't cost you anything. And subscribing is a simple gesture of showing showing you, um, you how you can support our channel. So subscribe, um, notification bell, give us a like if you've enjoyed this video. If it's helped you, leave comments down in the comment section below or questions. If you got a question about what I'm doing out here painting or if you just got a question about anything else out there about painting or not painting related. We'll see you on our next video. Out.